Well, we've seen how capacitors work, how they vary in orientation and their advantages, and we've seen an application of a capacitor that is extremely, extremely useful. Now, we're going to start heading into circuits. Not at this moment, but very, very shortly, we're going to be building circuits. Now, circuits are the underlying venue for electronics. Everything we've done up to this point, including the defining capacitance, we have been looking at behaviors and properties that will ultimately allow us to configure our, our own circuit. Well, a capacitor is part of a circuit. How you deal with capacitors in circuits can be a bit involved. So I want to provide you a problem solving strategy to consider capacitors in parallel and in series as they apply to circuits. Okay, so there's four steps to this problem solving here. And this is just a technique. However, the technique will also be used for another device that we're going to construct called the resistor. So it will be very, very similar. But I want to show it to you now because I believe very strongly in having one tool that applies to everything. So this technique not only applies to capacitors, whether series or parallel, they also do ap apply to resistors and in series and in parallel. So we haven't talked about resistors, but this same technique will be used. Now, the first step is to determine the equivalent, resist uh, the equivalent capacitance. The second step is to determine everything, let's get a little more board space here, everything associated with this equivalent capacitance. And by that I mean the equivalent capacitance, the charge stored on that capacitor, and the potential drop between the two plates. So let's learn everything about CEQ. Now that means Know what the equivalent capacitance is, know what the charge on that equivalent capacitor is, and know the potential difference between that equivalent capacitor. After that, you are now set to recall the advantages of capacitors being in series and in parallel. So recall the advantages. Okay, recall the advantages. Okay, now in series, remember the advantage of series was that the charge that's on the equivalent capacitor or it must be equal to the charge stored on each of the other two capacitors. And in parallel, the advantage was the potential difference on the equivalent capacitor is equal to the potential difference across the first and across the second. So those are the advantages. Recall those advantages. And work backwards. OK, work backwards. So what you're going to do is recall the advantages. You've now solved for, you know everything about the equivalent capacitor. You've got the equivalent capacitance, the charge on it, and the potential difference across the plates. And these are the advantages. Now take these two pieces of information and work backwards. Now, this is only going to make sense when applied to some examples. The next step and last step then is as you work backwards, determine everything about these new capacitors. And again, what I mean by that is note their charge, their capacitance, and the potential difference. So there are four steps to this thinking. Now, I understand this is just kind of out there. And it's like, what does that mean? Well, I would encourage you to look at all the examples under office hours for that or for the application of this, but I wanted to give it to you right here, right now. 
So there are four steps to determining all the information surrounding a capacitor. One, determine the equivalent capacitance. Two, determine everything you know about that equivalent capacitor. The, the capacitance, the charge, and the potential difference. Three, don't forget your advantages. These are what steer your train of thought in the solution. And then work backwards. Take, take what you know and your understanding of the advantages and work backwards. As you work backwards, start to learn everything about the capacitors as you work backwards. So this right here will be your one tool. This is my suggestion for solving it. There, it is not the only one. And if you find one that works better, please utilize it. Okay? But ultimately, this is a train of thought that in my mind will apply to any time that you use a capacitor, help you do it right the first time with the least amount of frustration. And those are always my goals for my students. Now, in some of the examples, this can certainly be, and I'm the first to admit it, in some problems, this can be a little bit of overkill, okay? But for me, I do not want to know how to do diff different processes for different applications of problems. Give me one and let it apply to everything, and that is what I find helps me, and it seems to help my students a little bit. Okay, well, these are the four steps to problem solving.